Terrors episode, with stories sent in by you, our Microterror listeners. Send in your own story at microterrors.com. Welcome to Micro Terrors. Scary stories for kids. Where it's always the spooky season. Full of chills. Thrills. And spine tingling spooks. Micro Terrors are family friendly frights for those ages 8 and up. And while our stories are for younger ears, we are still talking about things that go bump in the night, and some children may not be able to handle what others can. Parental consent is recommended. Now, for tonight's Micro Terror. The Living School Bus by Layla Rowe, age 11. Young Jenny Brooker was so excited and so nervous at the same time. She was nerve-sighted. Jenny was a sixth grader, and it was the first day of middle school. She sprinted down the stairs, dropped her backpack, and scarfed down her yogurt. Oh, oh there, kiddo! Why are you going so fast? said Jenny's dad. Sorry, Dad. I'm just so excited and kind of nervous for my first day of middle school, said Jenny. <laughs> okay, her dad said, laughing. You might want to head out. Your bus is almost here. Jenny waved goodbye, grabbed her backpack, and walked out the door. She was sitting down at her bus stop when she saw the bus coming her way. The outside looked scaly and green, and it was going up and down, almost like it was breathing. She stared at the bus, scanning it up and down, trying to understand what she was seeing. As she looked closer, she saw two black circles that looked like they were meant to be eyes. As the bus pulled up to her stop, she hesitantly walked up to it, still frightened of the monstrous look on the outside and worried of what could be on the inside. As the doors opened, it sounded like someone breathing a sigh of relief, but bigger and louder. When they opened up all the way, it revealed a fleshy-like interior. Every step that she took was followed by a gross, squishing sound. When she sat down on her seat, it squished. Her legs beneath her shorts could feel the slimy texture of it. Jenny got a chill up her spine when she laid down because on the ceiling there were six rib cages, each with lungs and a heart inside them. Jenny couldn't believe what she was seeing and started coming up with reasons for how this was happening. She ended up settling on the bus driver being a Halloween fanatic. But then the bus started moving. And when it did, the hearts started beating and the lungs were moving up and down. And as they did, it seemed as if the bus did too. Jenny bounced up a little bit for every breath the bus took. Then the bus driver let go of the wheel and it started turning on its own. The bus drove them into a secluded forest area where the bus driver led all the students outside the bus. Then the bus driver scanned all of the kids like she was shopping for a ripe banana. She then grabbed a tall, skinny boy and lifted up the front hood of the bus. When Jenny looked inside the front engine, she saw a mouth with super sharp teeth. Then the bus driver shoved the tall, skinny boy straight into the creature's mouth. Everybody shuffled back into the bus and continued with conversation as if nothing happened. When the bus started again, Jenny felt like it was going faster than before. It was almost like the creature ran on humans as fuel. This cycle continued over and over again until the end of the school year. So many children went missing on that bus. The Bloody Place by Millie Sinclair Cruth, 
age nine. Clementine was in third grade. She loved horror movies. Her favorite one was called The Bloody Place, which was a movie about a ghost who haunted a town and slowly slaughtered everyone who lived there. One night, after she watched her favorite movie, she went upstairs to get ready for bed. The next morning she woke up, got ready for school, and walked her usual route through the woods to get to school. She came across a young girl also walking along the path. The girl said to Clementine, "'Are you going to school?' Clementine said, "'Yes.' The young girl said, "'I know a shortcut. If you go along the path this way, it'll take you straight to the school.' Then the young girl vanished. Clementine thought this was weird, but decided to take the young girl's advice. She headed to the path, which led her past a large concrete building. She stopped to check it out, even though she was worried she'd be late for school. The building was long abandoned, and it looked like it had been an old factory of some kind. She had heard about strange sightings deep in the woods. Everyone said strange things lived there. No one knew what the things were, but there were many stories. The stories were confusing because people would report seeing creatures in the trees and then bizarre landscapes. For example, one man had seen a lake full of blood, but no one could ever find it again. Clementine walked through the heavy metal doors into the building. She saw many hallways, doors, and stairwells. There was a small window that showed a clearing in the woods she had not noticed when she was outside. Then she heard whispering, whispering that sounded like a bunch of young kids. She turned around, but no one was there, and the whispering had stopped. Clementine decided to walk down the hall and through two more large metal doors that led out to the clearing. She heard a scuttling in the trees. When she looked up, there was an unnatural being sitting in the tree. It had a small head perched on top of its shoulders. Somehow, ooze was coming out of what would be its skin. Before she could stop screaming, she woke up. Clementine's mother was sitting with her, on her bed. Her mom said, "'Were you having a nightmare? I told you not to watch that scary movie again.' Clementine said, "'You're right, Mom. I was dreaming about the ghost in the movie.' She smiled at her mom, and her mom smiled back. Clementine lay back down in bed, knowing there was nothing to be afraid of. She reached out to hold her mother's hand and say goodnight. Clementine recoiled as her hand touched something slimy where her mom's hand should have been. She shot up in bed, squinting into the darkness. Mom, are you okay? Her mom didn't speak. Instead, a raspy voice replied, I'm fine. We are the guardians of the portal to the world of horror movies. Clementine screamed, Who are you? Where is my mom? The strange thing said to her, I am your mother. Clementine screamed again and tried to run away. She managed to escape the house and run into the woods. All around her, she heard the thump, thump, thump of strange things jumping down from the trees. She ran deeper into the woods. One of the things lunged at her and she fell to the ground. The young girl she had seen in the woods that morning, or in her dream, appeared as the hideous creature and bit down on Clementine's neck. When Clementine regained consciousness, she realized she was inside her favorite horror movie. But the movie was a world of nightmares that she would never wake up from. The End In the Door of the Dragon by Sebastian Taj Hanek, age four. Once upon a time, me and Owen went into the woods and we found this treasure. So two dragons named Tookie Butt and the Dretch, the Petch, came flying up and bit our eyes because they wanted the treasure and it hurt. Then we turned into dragons and flew around blowing fire. We took the treasure and shared it with all the dragons. A special potion in the sky fell into our mouths and turned us back into kids, and we shared the treasure with all the other kids. Then we kicked a tree down and it hit the dragons down to the ground. They fell into the big river. The big river took them and they bumped into a tree. 
the dragons were nice to us after that. They never came back, ever, ever again. This has been a special Listener Terrors episode with stories sent in by you, our Micro-Terror listeners. Thank you for listening to Micro-Terrors. Join us each Saturday for another scary story. For more fun, visit our website at microterrors.com, where we will also have spooky games you can print out and play, like wicked word searches, mysterious mazes, and more. Microterrors.com is also where you can find us on your favorite social media and even send in your own scary story for us to tell. Plus, you'll learn more about our author, Scott Donnelly, who has other horrors for both young and old. I hope you'll join me again soon for Micro Terrors, Scary Stories for Kids.